love of Jesus. And I pray that all of you will truly fall in love with Jesus every day. You know, when you fall in love with somebody, really, really fall in love, you want to be with them all the time. You're thinking about them. So we pray that you would continue daily fall in love with Jesus. Come with me this evening to the Word of God, recorded in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, and verse 10. And it reads, it's on the back of your bulletin. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an ex exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he cried out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overturned. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relent, and of the di disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did it not do it. Listen, God is calling. He is calling for you and for me. And note in our message today, he called Jonah to go on a mission. And Jonah refused to go on a mission. In our text today, we find Jonah receiving the mission of God. God called him the first time and he said unto him, Go, go to that great city, Nineveh, and cry out unto it. And Jonah decided to go just the opposite. He took a ship going the opposite down to Jasper. And so often we, like Jonah, when God called us on a mission, call us to go for him, so often we decide that we'll go the opposite way. Amen. I know I'm perhaps talking to someone here today, no doubt that have received a message from God. God has spoken to you, spoken to your heart through the word as to what we are to do and how we are to do. And many of us, no doubt, have turned and gone just the opposite. This is what Jonah did. He thought that he could run from the presence of God. Listen, how foolish, how foolish Jonah must have been and how foolish we are today. That we think that we can get out of the presence of God. God who watches us and know every move that we make. Yet sometimes, perhaps if we really, really realize that God was watching us, if we really realize that God see and hear every word that we say, perhaps maybe, maybe we would do some of the things that we do. We would say some of the things that we do. Sometimes, perhaps, maybe, when we think of it, sometimes we have more respect probably for people than we do for God. But there are some things that I know that you probably wouldn't do if someone, mama, daddy, or some elder person watching you. There were some things, perhaps, that you wouldn't say in the presence of some people. But yet, we fail to remember that God is watching us. Amen. Here we find Jonah. The Bible says that he goes to get out of the presence of God. He goes down. And note now when we are going down, we are moving out of the presence of God. Just note here in the text, if you read again the book of Jonah, you find him going down to Jasper, going down in the ship, and then going down 
in the depths of the sea with the swell, the, the fish carried him. So often we find ourselves sometimes when we try to get out of the presence of God, we are going down, down, down. But God is a loving God. Jonah goes to get out of the presence of God. No doubt he had not read or didn't believe what David said. When David said, where can I go to get out of the presence of God? If I make my bed down in hell, behold, God is there. If I take the wings of the eagle and fly to the utmost parts of heaven, behold, you are there. We can't run from God. No doubt, maybe some of you are running from God. From the mission that God has given us. We are running and we are dodging the commission that God has given us. God has spoken to your heart through his word and we fail to follow through. Jonah is running. No, here now he takes, he pays the fare and get on a ship and he's on his way to Joshua. Here again, he can't get out of the presence of God. He gets on the ship and he goes down in the bottom of the ship and he goes asleep mm -hmm. to get away from the presence of God. And God now call, calls a hurl wind, a great storm to come. Note, my brothers and sisters, there are times when we are running away from God that we sometimes jeopardize and put the lives of others in danger. This is what happened with Jonah. He gets on the ship now and he endangers the lives of others on the ship because God is after him. It's happened with us sometimes. When we're running from God, we in terms get around people and in places that perhaps maybe we shouldn't be. We find with Peter, and when we are there, we do things that we ought not to do. Look at Peter running, no doubt, to get away from God. He says he's running from God, and he's he there warming, and he's in the company of people that a place maybe he shouldn't have been. Then he began to curse and swear. I never knew the man. There are some of us sometimes in places, and we forget that God is everywhere. There's things that we do and things that we say that we fail to realize that God is watching and he is listening. Jonah endangered the lives of others and the storm is coming and they threw off their cargoes into the water now trying to make it to, to, the, to the end or to, to land. And all of this, then the captain come and say, pray every one of you. Pray to your God. Call upon your God. Maybe he will hear and spare us. Amen. Jonah did not pray. Oh, God has given us the ability to pray. And we know that prayer changes things. And note here, Jonah is down in the bottom of the ship, sleep, not praying. And the storm is raging. Jonah is sleeping. There are times, sometimes, when in life we have to get people out of our lives in order to calm things down. There are perhaps some people in your life, some people in your life that probably causing some trouble and causing heartaches, and sometimes it's good to get rid of those things. Notice here, they had to get rid of Jonah. Because the storm was raging, they threw him overboard. And here again, God was compassionate. We serve a loving and compassionate God. Even though we are doing things that are wrong, God is still, his hands of mercy is still upon us. Well, I know we can get some amens here. So I'm sure there are many times there are things that we have done wrong and yet God's hand of mercy is still there. He is still blessing us even when we are going in the wrong direction because he loves us so. He is a patient God waiting patiently for us to turn around and repent of our sins and hear the gospel. Jonah is thrown overboard. Here God prepared 
Notice there's much discussion about what it was to swallow Jonah. There are those who say it was a whale, and some will say that it's impossible for a whale to swallow man, and he lives in his belly for three days. But note here, God prepared a fish. Amen. Read the word there. It says God prepared a fish. The God that we serve is able to do anything. The God who created this world, he is able to do anything. And he prepared a fish for Jonah. Amen. Swallowing him up. Three days, three nights, Jonah is in the belly of this fish. Mm -hmm. And now he prays. Isn't that just like us? When we're in trouble, deep trouble, then we'll call on the name of God. We'll call on God. And soon as God get us out, you know, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And so it is with Jonah when God had mercy and he heard his prayer. The Bible said that Jonah prayed, prayed that God would hear. And God heard his prayer. Amen. He will hear our prayer, too, in time of trouble even when we are going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us, God's word says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Amen. Remember that church, we have a compassionate God. Even when we are in trouble, even when we are going the wrong way, mm -hmm. we can call upon him and, and God will listen. This is what this whole lesson is about. People from praying and turning from their sin and God listening. Amen. Jonah, God called this fish to spit him out, spit him out on dry land. I can imagine Jonah shouting for joy. But still, still Jonah was not right. There was still a little stubbornness in him. Mm -hmm. Even though he got up and decided to go and preach the word. God says, now speak to him again the second time. And we thank God that he is a God of second chance. Amen, church. Amen. A God of second chance. A God who is willing to give us a second chance. Again and a third and again and again. Amen. If we turn to him. For we hear him saying in his word, if my people would turn and confess their sin, he is just and will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Oh, what a gracious God we serve. Amen. Jonah now is going. He goes to preach God's word. And notice God says to him, you go and tell them what I have told you. We don't know what Jonah message, all of Jonah message. We don't know if it was just these eight words here that he preached. And those eight words caused the people to turn. Or maybe Jonah preached more than that. But he goes to this great city of Nineveh. And the reason Jonah didn't want to go because Nineveh was his enemy. Nineveh had overthrown Israel. And here captured them and now they are his enemy and Jonah didn't want to go. But it seemed as if he would be eager to go knowing that God would destroy them. That was the first message that God gave him. Go and I will overturn them. But here now as he go and preach the word, yet 40 days and God will overthrow you. What a powerful message. That's the power of the word of God. That word of God that is able to change the hearts of, of people. And God's word will change our heart. No matter how stubborn and how violent we are. It said of the people of Nineveh that they were wicked and violent people. Amen. Wicked. The stick that came up to God's nose. And yet here as Jonah preached the word. Yet in 40 days will Nineveh be overthrown. Amen. And the people believed. People believe. From the king all the way down. Notice here that the king gave an edict saying that everybody, no man, woman should eat or drink anything. Even the beasts were not to eat or to drink. And they were to go down in sackcloth and ashes and repent, a sign of repentance. Sackcloth and ashes meaning 
that I'll turn from my wicked ways. I'll turn to the Lord. And God saw what they had done. God sees us too when we are sincerely repentant and he knows our heart. So often with us sometimes we have turned. When God tells us that we are to turn, turn from our wicked ways, meaning that we are to turn all the way around, not part ways, but to turn from our wicked ways. And so many of us sometimes yeah, I forgive them, but we need to leave that but off and really and truly forgive those who have offended us. Here, the people turn. No one should eat or drink, and God saw. What a merciful God we have, a God who continued to show mercy and kind, and God relent. Here the Bible says God relent, God repented of what he intended to do. His intention was to destroy them. But because they forgave, asked for forgiveness, God was mercy and the same with us. We confess in our creed, we confess that we deserve nothing but his wrath and damnation. That's what we deserve for our sin. But God, for the sake of Jesus, Forgive us of all of our sins. Or oh, now you think that Jonah would be happy to preach such a powerful sermon. Yet in 40 days will the Nineveh be overturned. And to see that 120,000 people read it in chapter 4. God says there's 120,000 people, souls that turn. Wouldn't you be happy? When you shout for joy. Mm -hmm. But Jonah now, he goes out of the city. Three days he goes through the city. And he goes out of the city and he sits under a little bush. No doubt make him a little hut out there. And God in the sun. And it was hot. Mm -hmm. Just a little sample perhaps of what hell would be like. Mm -hmm. Jonah sits out there and God showing mercy again to Jonah. He caused a bush to grow up overnight Amen. to give him shade. Amen. And Jonah said, and said, Jonah was happy because he had shade. But God knew his heart. He knew that his heart was not right. And here again, God sent a worm to cut that bush down. And overnight, it withered up and died. And Jonah now, the next day, the Bible said that God, God have a way of dealing with us. Ah, uh, he have a way of dealing with us. The Bible says that God sent a hot sun, the heat that beat up on his head and the wind so that Jonah fainted and said, I wish that I was dead. My brothers and sisters, here again, God is calling us. There's a call for you. God have a mission for you. Each and every day he is calling you. Each and every day that you get up out of the bed, God is calling, just as he called Peter, James, and John to come and follow him, he is calling you to come follow me. Follow me bravely through trials and tribulation. Follow me until I say to you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. He is calling you. Listen, there's a song that we sing. Listen, listen, God is calling we just finished singing here, hush, somebody is calling my name. Mm -hmm. Notice it says, my name. God is calling. Oh, it sounds like Jesus. He is calling us to come follow him. Follow him and to live a life that is pleasing to him. A life that shows that we are children of God because we love one another. Amen. Yes. God said to Jonah, why are you not concerned about those 120,000 people? And yet you show more concern. Jonah was troubled by this bush dying. He says, and you had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with this bush coming up and 
dying and why are you so sorry about this little bush? And yet 120,000 people you're not concerned about. My brothers and sisters, there are those around us. Maybe not 120,000, but there is somebody near you that God is calling you to go and tell. Or sometimes we say, come and see. We sit back and we say, come and see. But we need to go and tell. This is the message that God has for Jonah. Go and tell. Amen. Tell the great things that God has done for you. Tell the mighty acts that he has done in your life. How he has saved you. That is the message today. Hush. Somebody is calling your name. Amen. Amen. Oh, it sounds like Jesus. He is calling you. May God bless you today and keep you as our prayer. Amen and amen. amen. We have a selection by the minister David. 